right, so for our second example of a flux integral, we're gonna look at the sphere. And we're gonna find the flux of zyx, this vector field uh, right here, uh, coming out of the unit sphere. So let's see, so we're gonna need to parameterize this thing, and of course we know what the parameterization is that we're gonna use. We're gonna use the standard spherical coordinates. So this is gonna be uh, sine phi cosine theta, sine phi sine theta, cosine phi. Um, <clears throat> and now, annoyingly, uh, usually what we know about this is, is the Jacobian. That's the sort of one we have pre-computed. Uh, but we don't actually know what the uh, sigma phi cross sigma theta looks like. So we're going to have to do that from scratch. So let's see. So sigma phi, so this is, uh, we'll take derivatives, partial derivatives with respect to phi. So we get cosine phi cosine theta, oops, it's not a comma, that's a product, um, cosine phi sine theta, and then minus sine phi. And then for the theta derivative, we'll get uh, minus sine phi sine theta, and then uh, sine phi cosine theta, and then zero, because there's no theta in the third one. All right, and then we're gonna to have to multiply these. So sine phi cross, sorry, sigma phi cross sigma theta. Um, and so let's see, so we've got uh, cosine phi cosine theta, and then cosine phi sine theta, and then minus sine phi. This is our I column, our J column, and our K column. And then we'll have the minus sine phi, sine theta, sine phi, cosine theta, zero. And we need to take the cross product of that bad boy. So that's going to give us, let's see, in the first coordinate, we're gonna have uh, sine squared phi, cosine theta. And the second coordinate, we're gonna get, um, let's see, negative, uh, oh, but then it's the J spot, so positive sine squared phi sine theta. And then in the last one we get, um, let's see, cosine, cosine phi sine phi. So those both originally uh, appear with a, a cosine squared and a sine squared factor, but then when you simplify, you get this guy. All right, okay. So now, what do we need? Um, well, let's first, let's check the orientation to see if we've got something that gives us a positive orientation uh, according to the convention. So I, let's, uh, I can compute it at phi equals zero. <clears throat> and then in this case, um, what do we get? We get sigma phi cross sigma theta at zero is uh, gonna give us just, uh, well, hmm, zero, zero, zero. So uh, we don't know what direction that's pointing in because it has length zero, so we can't tell. Ah. Okay, so then we'll have to pick some other point. Um, so let's go ahead and choose, uh, I guess we'll take phi equals something else that's easy to compute. How about phi equal pi over two and theta equals zero. All right, so then um, sigma phi cross sigma theta at pi over two zero gives us, and then we'll get a one for the first one and then zeros for the other. Okay, great, that works. So if we've got, um, Wah. Come on, you stupid thing. There we go. So if we have our uh, unit sphere, then something like this. Here's uh, y, x, and z. Then we just evaluated, uh, so phi equals, so what happens right here at this point, and the vector is pointing that direction. Okay, so it's coming outward, so things are good. All right orientation is correct. So then we take the double integral over s of f dot 
d sigma. And so in terms of our parameter domain, we're gonna take theta from zero to two pi and phi from zero to pi. And then we've got, um, uh, let's see, so z, y, x under this substitution is gonna be cosine phi, and then y is gonna be sine phi, sine theta, and then x is gonna be sine phi, cosine theta. And we're gonna dot this with um, the cross product that we computed just above right here. So I'm just, uh, the first stuff I got by using this data substituted into this vector field. And now I'm gonna include this one right here. Actually here, let's be like totally lazy and just like grab that thing and paste it. Uh, bam, there you go, okay. So there it is. And then, um, <clears throat> so that's d phi d theta. And so now I gotta work out that stinking cross product and it's gonna be, let's see, so, um, mm -hmm. So I've got a cosine phi, sine squared phi, cosine theta from the first term plus, and then I've got sine cubed phi, sine squared theta. And then I've got um, sine squared phi, uh, cosine phi, cosine theta, and that's all still d phi d theta. These guys are the same, so I can combine them with a two. And then we've got, let's see, we've gonna have a, we're gonna have a, a, a theta function times a phi function, so this will split, so we'll have zero to uh, two pi, cosine theta d theta times the integral zero to pi um, sine squared phi cosine phi d phi for the, one, the, the that combined integral with the purple underlines. And then we also have the other one, which is zero to two pi um, sine squared theta d theta times integral from zero to pi sine cubed phi d phi. Okay, and so for this first one here, we can actually get rid of that one because cosine is two pi periodic. So if you integrate it over its period interval, you get zero, it balances out. So this whole term drops out. Um, so now we can just go ahead and do the other one, and the other one is fairly straightforward. What do you do? You rewrite the sine cubed phi as sine phi times uh, sine squared. And then you can rewrite that as one minus cosine squared phi and go to town from there. And at the end of the day, the dust settles and you have four pi over three. Bam. 